So today we're going to um, be introduced to Facebook in a way that most of us may not be familiar with. Uh, we, we understand primary, maybe even uh, primitive functions of Facebook, but it is actually a tool for building your business. And there are certain things you need to know and be aware of so that you can grow your business through Facebook. Don Jacobson, let's give her There we go. I have coffee. I'm good. So first of all, I just want to thank you guys so much for the opportunity to let me come up here and teach you and train you. I love to teach and train. It's one of my most favorite things to do. So hopefully this is engaging. It's really difficult when you're starting out in a group and you're training on a topic to understand exactly where to put it at, what level to put it at. So this is really kind of a broad overview. And then since I'm gonna be doing training going forward, we can talk at the end about what that looks like for you guys and where you wanna go as far as, okay, this was, this is great, we need to really dig into this part or we'd like to learn about this or that or the other thing, if that makes sense. Yes? Yes. Yes. Feedback, yes. yes. Okay, very good, all right. So, like I said, this is gonna be an introduction. This is the date. If anybody wants to know what this really cool tool is, it's called Evernote. I don't know, does anybody know about Evernote? Evernote is an electronic notebook. I won't spend too much time on it, but it also connects to your phone. It holds my life. You can create digital notebooks. And then what this is, is this is a presentation that I've just put the pages into the notebook, and then you can put it in presentation mode. Voila. So I know all about all these kinds of little tools that are out there, and I'll be sharing them as I go. Okay. So if you don't know about me, I um, own Firefly Media, and um, this is our lovely logo that took up the whole page. Um, and what we do is basically we enable you to shine online. So um, I help business owners like yourself, both online and locally, to leverage technology to build leads and sales and to use all that technical stuff to be able to do something with it instead of looking at it going, oh my gosh, what do I do with all this? There's just so much. How do I know what to do with it? How do I make it effective? How do I see a return on investment? Because it's really hard to um, do it all. So you need to have a strategy and understand what it is and where you should be online. And that's what I help business owners do. I have a YouTube channel online that you go on to YouTube at. It's actually at Don Jacobson uh, YouTube forward slash Don Jacobson. But this is the other places that you can see me online, and I will be sending these slides out to you. So in a PDF, so don't stress about you can send it to us writing that all down. You don't have to write it all down. No, I'll send it out to you. So. I have been, um, I won't go into a whole lot of this because I don't want to take up too much time and just really get into the training, but I have been, I kind of grew up on the internet. I am in between the baby boomers and the millennials, and so I kind of have the, had the ability and the unique experience of starting out in software. I used to sell software at Egghead, if you remember Egghead. So when I started out in the workforce, that's kind of how I started. So I've been able to put one hand over here and one hand over here and understand all the technical stuff that's going on, but also be able to understand and communicate that to people that don't really, you know, that may have a difficult time understanding that. So really you can think of me as like a technology coach, I guess. Some of the things that we do is we do branding, we do WordPress design and development. I also do training on WordPress, technology coaching, like I said, corporate training, strategic planning, um, Google ranking for local um, rank on Google, and the other search engines, social media marketing, copywriting. And then we also have a help desk, which you can purchase a subscription to, and then you can uh, enter a certain number of questions every month and get those answered. Excuse me, Dawn, yes. what is WordPress design? WordPress is website. So a lot of people that are building blogs or simple websites online, there's a couple different platforms that you can use to do that. WordPress is one of the most popular platforms that small businesses use to build, and large businesses do too. But um, that's, it's, called, it's just called WordPress. Okay. And then I did, like I said, I have time at the end as well. I mean, I'm fine with you guys being interactive and asking questions, but I did set aside time also. So if you have a pressing question and you think it's gonna, there's time. So here's what we're gonna cover. 
We're going to do a little bit of a social media review. We're going to go over some Facebook basics, um, a little bit about optimizing your presence, some posting basics, a tiny bit on Facebook advertising, and then some Q&A, and then where you guys want to go next, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right in, and hopefully you guys can see some of this. So social media, does being on social media really matter? Do I really need to be on there? Is it a big deal? Does my business need to be on there? Well, the answer is yes, and here's why. It's not because everybody else is on social media, and so-and-so said, hey, I have a Facebook page, you should get one too, or I have a blog, and you should get one too. The reason is, is because this graph shows the ranking methods for Google itself. So this is how um, the algorithms come together, or all the mathematical calculations on the back end that determine how um, pages get ranked on the internet, okay? And as you can see, everything that's in orange here are social media. So those are uh, Google plus ones, any plus ones on Google, Facebook shares, Facebook comments, any posts on Pinterest, Facebook likes and tweets. Those are all in the top 10. So that is the main reason to be active on social media is because your business, if you're using a business page, um, or even your personal profile, as you are gaining these things, then you will come up for keywords within those posts on the search engine. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. And the, the top one, the click through, is that the same as pay for uh, pay per click? That is click through rate. So that means if somebody actually clicks on the link and goes to that page and stays there. So that doesn't really have anything to do with social media. That means, is that link relevant to what they were searching for, right? So if I search on, you know, I don't know, Nike shoes, and I click on the first link, am I gonna find the information that I'm looking for? Then if I do, that is going to rank up higher the next time. Does that, does that answer the question? So there's lots and lots of stats on here, but I wanted to point out the reason why it's important to be active on social media. And that means when people are searching for your service. Yes. Yes, you come up ahead of everybody yes. else. Yes, yeah. <laughs> keyword searching. So Google and the other search engines are all about keyword searching. People are constantly looking for particular words that come up over time. So, and we can go all into local search versus national and international and all that kind of searching, but it is relevant to the fact that if, you, if someone locally is searching for those keywords, then if your business has more social posts than another business with those keywords in it, then you're gonna rank higher. Okay? So if I put in wedding marriage, Dave would come up. If well, I'm we would like to, being yeah. that Dave comes up. Yes, Dave will come up, yes. Yes, okay, so that is why social media matters. Um, and also in here, there's some, I put some little things that have stats. You can go to search metrics and get all this stuff. Okay, um, so why use social media? That is the question that I just answered. Search engine optimization, SEO, SEO, SEO. That is the main reason to be on social media. Also, it's free, right? What other advertising is free? Not very much, so, or low cost. It builds one-on-one -on -one relationships if you're using it properly. The point is to make social media an extension of your local network. A lot of people like to think of social media as being out there, like the internet is out there and we're right here, when really it's about an extension of your network. And so treating people online just like you treat them as if you were in a room with them goes a lot further. So you introduce yourself to somebody, build relationships. It's the same thing as coming into a networking group and if you stood in the corner and just watched what everyone was doing, that wouldn't go very far. You have to actually build relationships. And so social media is really effective for that if you're using it the right way. It also increases your brand awareness. It gets your name out there, broadens your network. Like I said, it can generate leads and sales if you're using it properly. And it also empowers others to advertise for you. So if you got um, some superstar people that really like what it is that you're doing, you can get them to make shares that go into their network. Essentially, you're using them to advertise for you. Okay, any questions so far? Oh, you keep going, I got a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, are you on Facebook? 
Okay, raise your hand if you have a business Facebook page. Okay, good. That's pretty good. Who in here is on Twitter? Supposedly I am. I am active, active on Twitter. Okay, okay, that's different, right? Okay. That's a different question. All right, so why are others on Facebook? There's 1.4 billion members or, yeah, members of Facebook now. That's the most recent stat. Again, four of the social media ranking factors for Google um, have to do with Facebook posts, likes, comments, and shares. So you want to make sure that that's a good reason to be on Facebook. Um, the average user on Facebook is connected to 40 pages. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many I'm connected to, but a lot. Um, it's a hub for sharing your content elsewhere on the web, right? So if you post a video on YouTube or you post something on Vimeo, which is another video um, hosting service, or if you post something on Twitter or you post something on your website or your blog, Facebook is a great place to share that content. It's not the best place to host the content, it's the best place to share the content out. And you can, there's a number of tools to do that automatically so you don't have to spend all your life on Facebook, which I recommend not doing. Um, there's Facebook advertising, which I'm going to go into at the end, which is a fantastically underutilized tool that is extremely inexpensive. Um, and Facebook used to be free. It used to be that when you had a Facebook business page and you had a thousand people that liked your page, you'd post something about your cute shoes in the morning or your new nail polish and all thousand people would see your post and that's not the way that it is anymore. So just as a side note, I know that some, this is why a lot of people say, well, why I don't, I mean, what's the, even the point to be on Facebook anymore because nobody sees your stuff. Well, that's true. However, and that's why I said, alas, all good things must come to an end because Facebook is like, we're, we're not going to allow businesses to advertise for free on here anymore. We want to make some money because we're a business. Um, but right now, if you have a thousand likes on your page, about 22% of people are seeing those posts. So that is not to negate the other reasons to be on Facebook, okay? So what I'm trying to say with this is, just because your posts aren't getting in front of people or in front of all of your fans or your page likers anymore, that's not the primary reason to be on Facebook, okay? So why are you on Facebook? I went through a little bit of this, right? Why are you there? Because someone said I should be. Everyone else is there. So these are the questions to ask yourself on any social media platform. Is what I'm doing providing value to my company and to my potential and existing customers? Is it bringing benefits to my business, like growing my brand? Is it generating leads for me? Is it creating return on my time investment? If it's not doing those things, you need to learn more about Facebook or you need to decide to do something else with your time because it's not, it's not worth it. Anything that we do in our businesses, we only have so many resources, we only have so much time. So just being on Facebook because everyone else is on Facebook is not a good reason to be on Facebook. Okay? All right. So sum that all up. Know why you are doing what you are doing. I offer marketing strategy sessions that you may have with me, and I'm actually doing a discount on them for y'all because they're here, but I'll talk about that at the end. So here's a, again, now I'm going to jump into real quickly. Um, again, I, I want to do an overview, so I hit everybody where they're at. There's a lot of confusion that I get between what's a page, a profile, and a group, and hopefully this isn't too basic of information for you guys. I'll do it really quickly. Um, a profile. That's you and me and your friends. We all have a profile. If you sign up for Facebook, you have a profile. This is my profile. This is my kid right here. <laughs> Isn't he so cute? I had to put him on there. Um, so this is a profile. This is where we share our own stats, you know, our little things here. This is what I had for breakfast, blah, 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 blah. A cool thing about your profile is that you want to make sure that you connect your business page to what it is that you do, right? So this is a link that people can click through and go to my business page, both this one and this one right here on Don Jacobson. So to do that, you go into your actual settings on your pro personal profile, find your business page and put it there. So when people pull up your profile, because they know you within the community, they can get to your business, okay? Yeah. Question, burning question. If you have a private group, can you do the same way? Can't do a group that way. Nope, only a page. So. Yeah. Okay, what's a page? There is lots of different classifications for a page, but the main two are a business, which is a physical location, or a brand like Coca-Cola, right? Um, that's 
a business, but it's humongous. So it's more like a brand. This is what a page looks like. It's different than your profile. Okay, your page is actually resides within your profile. So a lot of people will go and they will make another Facebook profile for their business and that's not necessary. That's not what you want to do. You want to go within your personal profile and I'll show you later. You go up to the top here and that's where you create your pages at. So that every time you're personally logged into Facebook, you can go to your various business pages. Not log into this one and then log out and then log into another one. Make sense? Okay. What is a group? Hey, look! Heart of business. I didn't get that. Oh wait, did I? Oh no, I, I put a different slide in here. Okay, so groups are communities. Okay, so you can think of a group as like an online heart of business. There are a certain number of people in there. You can make it open, you can make it closed, you can make it completely secret so you and your friend can have a private conversation within your own little group. Um, a lot of the groups are out there and they have a specific purpose as a community to bring people together. So there's like Heart of Business, I have one for technology and marketing, um, there's like Coeur d'Alene Runners, there's all sorts of online groups. Whenever you join a group, or search for a group, they show up here within your profile when you're on your home page. Okay? So I wanted to show you that piece. There was another slide, but I missed it. Okay. Okay, let's jump into optimizing your page. What am I at for time? Oh dear. Okay. So when you're thinking about optimizing your Facebook presence, again, this all goes back to search engine optimization, right? Because the point is to rank when people are looking for you, to show up, right? That's basic advertising, be in front of the customer. So in order to do that, you need to think like your potential customer. What are they gonna be searching for? What do they wanna hear? What are they interested in? Where do they hang out? What magazines do they read? That kind of thing. We're thinking not about what I want to say to them, but what do they want to hear? What are they looking for? And as long as you can keep that in the forefront of your mind as what they want, that's going to go a long way in getting more engagement on your posts and, and uh, different things that you put out there. Make sure that you complete your about, right? So on your page itself, you have this. I'll scoop back up in a minute. This is your about page. Um, you want to fill this all out and you want to use keywords, right? So keywords for your business, like Connie was saying, right? If you're doing uh, wedding photography, you'd want to make sure that you include wedding photography in as many places on there as you can, okay? That's what keyword optimization is. Make sure that you get the correct categories and subcategories for your business. That shows up right here. And then your subcategories, whoops, I'm sorry, your categories are uh, computers and technology, and then for me, the subcategories are web design, marketing, and computer training. There's a multitude of that you can ch uh, choose from when you go in for your particular industry or niche. Just make sure that you have that set up correctly so that when people come to your page, they know what you're about. These are set by Facebook, correct? You set, the, you set these. But I mean, in terms of the, what you can choose, for example, yes. wedding officiants is not one of the ones I can yes. choose from. So yes. how would I go about asking Facebook to create that as a category or subcategory? Um, they are pretty sticky about what they're going to allow there or not because right. I don't think they want to get, you exactly. know, like 6,000 of them. So what I would recommend doing with that is to put that right up front within your short description because that's what shows on the left-hand side when people visit your page. And then make sure that you do that. I might even use a hashtag for it. Um, in case people are searching for that. Where would that, where would they search? So, hashtag? Um, hashtag searching is something that usually uh, people that know what they're doing are doing, <laughs> but, and I can go into that later, but basically you're searching for it in the main search bar. So if you were gonna do a search for Facebook, if I wanted to look for photographers um, in, you know, Coeur d'Alene or whatever, I would put the pound sign and then Coeur d'Alene or, or put, you know, uh, say I was looking for something like on um, a specific sporting event that was national, right? And I wanted to get all the posts on the World Cup or something like that. I could put pound World Cup and every post that somebody posted about the World Cup will come up 
there. So that's kind of like Twitter. Twitter uses a lot of hashtags, but Facebook, you know, was like, yeah, well, they, we want to do it too. So they did. I don't think very many people use it on Facebook, but that is what it's there for. Yeah. Yes, you, you can. Hashtag before. Yeah, well, it'll search anyway, right? It'll search for keywords throughout Facebook anyway, but that really narrows it down. So if somebody puts hashtag World Cup in their post and you search, yeah, and you search for hashtag World, World Cup, then that's going to, did I say World Post? Anyway, okay. Um, let's see what else. Got that, got that. Keywords. Make sure that you're using hyperlinks within, ooh, ooh, within, I didn't, so, you know, naughty me. Um, make sure that you're, when you are using or putting different links into this, you make sure that you put your hashtag or your uh, hyperlink in there, which is HTTP Double. colon slash, <coughs> and then you're the name of the site that you're trying to reference. Um, write conversationally. Make sure that you use correct images. Canva.com, you can visit that when you get these slides. Really, really cool place to make social media images. Set them all up for you. Um, make sure that you choose your URL. You have to have 25 fans to do that on your page, but that basically gives you um, a page URL that people can go to and you can give it out like Facebook.com. Where is it at? Facebook.com slash Firefly Media. To whatever your business is. If you don't do that, you're just going to have a bunch of numbers up there. And you won't be able to give that to somebody and say, hey, here, go to my Facebook page. Once you have that custom URL, after you have 25 fans, you can say, hey, go to fb.me forward slash whatever you have chosen. Really simple. Okay? Okay, where am I at? Do I need to get done right at 9.30? You want me to go? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Keep going. Oh, okay. Well, we're, we're good then. Okay, so now we're going to hop into actually using your page. First of all, some basics. Have a page. <laughs> Don't use your profile, please. <laughs> use Facebook as your page. Here's what, this is the clip I was going to show you. So when you have created Facebook pages or you want to create a page, I would be within my profile. I click over here and it says use Facebook as. And if I were to click on see more, I could go down there and it would say create a page. Okay, so that's where I was saying when you log into your profile, that's how you are connected to your page. Not by creating another account and having it on that. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. And please don't like your own posts when you're using the page as your business. Because it just looks really silly. Because then Firefly Media like to post by Firefly Media. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like my own stuff. <laughs> Okay, posting basics. This kind of goes back to um, what I said before with Canva. Um, you want to make sure that you're using engaging and correctly sized images when you're making your posts on Facebook, okay? So, like I said, Canva, and I'll see if I can pop over there real quick since I do have 10 minutes. I don't know if this will let me or not. Hmm, I might have to go out for a second. Let's see. Because I got to show you. So is this a site that will properly size it for you? Yeah. Oh, it does lots of things, but yes. So I'll show you real quick here. So this is <coughs> Canva.com? Yeah, this is Canva.com. Okay. So Canva lets you, you can use it for free or for five bucks a month. You can set it up and put your brand colors in there, and then it'll give you all these ideas of how to put up posts, right? So if I say, okay, well, I need to create a new Facebook post. I just go over here and I say, okay, this is what I need to do. And it has all these little things. Do you want to create a post? Here's a social media post. Do you need to create a document? Do you want to do um, a blog post? Do you want to create an ebook cover? So there's all these things on here, flyers, business cards, all sorts of things. So I'm going to click on Facebook post. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up my branding colors with a bunch of examples of posts on it, and then other layouts there. So if I said, hey, this looks really cool, I have a little quote that I'm gonna do, I pop that over there, then I double click on this and I say, okay, and then to fix that, all I do is say, okay, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna download this, I download it as an image, 
And then I can use that right on Facebook and it's properly sized and it looks great and it's my brand colors and everything's all there in one. If I wanted to, I could go like this and say, file, I want to change, or I want to do magic resize and I need a Twitter post that's this same thing and I need an Instagram post and I need a Pinterest quote post that all have the same information on it. And so then I go ahead and click the things I want on the left hand side and then I click, yep, that's what I want to do. Go ahead. I didn't, it's not going to let me for some reason. Oh, because I'm still editing. Anyways, you click on that and it'll give you all of that at once. So then you just save those and put them on your social media platforms. Okay? So that's where people are making their own things. Yes. One of the places. Yes. Yep. Okay, so let me get out of here. That was a little side note. Get back to where well, I was. How much can you do without paying five bucks a month? Quite a bit. The $5 a month gives you the customized branding, so that just automatically populates with my colors and gives me like five different options that are real easy right up front. The other thing that it lets me do is it lets me um, share it with my team so that they can create um, different things that I've set up and said, hey, this is how I want it to look, and then they can tweak things and then put, post them out for me. Um, but you can do almost everything that's not specific to your brand on there for free. Okay. Here's where I was, okay. Posting ba basics. That's where you get correctly sized images. The other place to get really cheap stock images is Dollar Photo Club, it's a dollar an image. So if you are concerned about um, copyright or anything like that, that's a great place to get really high quality images for a buck. Um, make sure that you use link formatting in your post. So does that make sense to anyone? No. Okay. So what that means is that when you go and get a, a, a article from the web, you copy the URL of that article and then you pop the URL into the post itself. Right, right. Because then Facebook will auto-populate that and it gives the information as much as possible to your readers rather than just putting a link there. So it's a much more engaging. It'll pull the uh, featured image from that article and put it there for you. It gives them a little... Um, a little excerpt there um, and so it'll give you know this information here and sometimes they've changed it a little bit but you used to be able to change that to whatever you wanted it to say like hey look at this it's really cool or but I they've kind of I don't know they change things every day <laughs> okay um, so use what's the difference between to get that versus just doing the, the uh, cut and paste link yeah, so it's the difference between a cut and a paste and a type in. Right. right. So you want to cut and paste the link in okay. whatever article or whatever link you're trying to share. You want to cut and paste that rather than typing the link in itself. Because then it will auto populate all of that and it gets better. So it needs to be HTTP in order for it to yes, recognize. Yes, that's yes. correct. Okay. Yes, yes. And once it comes up, you can also erase that link. Yes, yes, and then erase. Yes, exactly. That's right. Okay, uh, let's see here. Using call to actions in your posts and pages. So a new thing that Facebook put up, um, which I'm not going to go into showing you how to do it now, but on a business page and other pages, you can go ahead and choose different call to actions right on the front. So this is the front page, and then you can choose book now or call now or schedule an appointment or watch this video, and you can put it right on the front of your page. Okay? Um, so just to know that's there. The other thing is, is that within your post itself, you want to make sure that you are asking questions, sharing posts or pictures and videos, and asking people, click like, hey, you know, did you do you like chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies? Yes or no, right? And then discounts and promos. The um, ratio for posting on what it is that you want to be posting is about 20% promotional posts versus 80% of engaging material that is something your potential client would be interested in, right? So just because I post things on marketing, I also post things sometimes on um, inspirational posts about, you know, take on the challenge and all other things that I know that are in common to my clients, right? So what are they into? Well, a lot of my clients, I have male clients too, but a lot of them are female. So sometimes I'll post like, you know, here's a really pretty picture of some flowers. So that's the kind of thing. You want to be thinking about what is it that my potential clients, the people that I'm trying to reach, what are they into? 
and then post stuff that they'd be into, stories, you know, anything like that. And then about 20% of the time you're posting on um, promos and discounts. And, and, and that's a good point because some people do nothing but promote. Yes. Yes. And you see those coming and just fly past them and you're so sick of looking at them. Yes. Yes. And that's exactly the problem is that nobody cares anymore. Unless you're already engaged with the brand, they're like, yeah, okay, mailer. <laughs> right? Let's use that for kindling. Um, getting your timing right. I'm not going to go into this because the time that is right is for whatever time is right for you. When are your customers online? You can do that by going into insights on your page right here and it'll give you a ton of different information, right? So these are my posts for the last week. I actually just started this page. I have another page that I'm merging with it, but side note. So um, it'll tell you what your reach was and which posts got the most engagement, right? So this right here was a promotional, or not a promotional, it was just an inspirational thing that I put out there and it got the most engagement so that'll tell you open for any page? any page and where was that so if you go to the top of the page under insights and i didn't even show all of what you can look at on here but if you go across you also have these tabs right here that then have multiple different analytics as you go down the page for each thing i've never even looked at them and so this will tell you when the right time to post is. And I did make a little note of this, right? So this tells me right here, when are, when are my demographic online? Okay? So it looks like noon is a peak time for me to be posting. Make sense? Yeah. So look at your stuff because it will tell you. I can't tell you when the right time is to post. You just got to do A-B testing and check it out. So as you get more likes on your page, you should probably look at that because the demographics yes. may change Yes. based on who's liking it. Yes. yes. Well, look, I, I was told once to um, post in the morning for the morning people, post at noon, post at night. But doesn't that show up in your timeline three times, or how, how does that work? No, because only 22% of the people, if you have a 1,000 people on the page, and it depends on how many, the percentage is based on how many likes you have on your page, with who gets to see it, how many people get to see it. So no, they're not all gonna see it, a repeat. However, they, you'll find that there are multiple schools of thought on how online marketing should be done. So one of the things that came out recently was don't spend your time posting on Facebook for the purpose of posting on Facebook because it's just not being seen anymore. So we're posting on Facebook for search engine optimization, for brand awareness, to share content, and to just basically say, hey, we're here on Facebook. But there are other places to be more effective online than Facebook. Now, that is not to talk about Facebook advertising because Facebook advertising is extremely effective for both local and national um, uses. But you don't. Ha you can have. You can do Facebook advertising with two people liking your page, and nobody sees your page. It doesn't matter. Don, when you um, create a page, now yes. you need people to like it. Yes. So I'm assuming you can go in there and invite people to like your page. At the beginning, you can like. You can invite people up to a hundred likers. And and so, would you advise? Because of the, not everybody sees that. Maybe. A week later, do it again. Um, when you send an invite for people, to, are you sharing the page or are you actually sending an invite? Because there's two different ways. You can share the page, which is one way to say, you know, here's my page, like it, please. And then I could share my page within Heart of Business Group and say, hey, here's my page. Would you please like my page? Or if you have less than a hundred likers on your page, you can go in and say invite friends when you're using Facebook as yourself. And then it will actually send them a private notification that says, so-and-so invited you to like this page. And they will see it, or if, you know, some people don't check any of their notifications, but that will get in front of them. So would you, going back to the point, would you do it again in a week in case they didn't even see that? You can't invite again. You can only invite once. But if you're talking about sharing it, yeah, I would share it multiple times okay. in different places, yes. You can yeah. go to different business groups and then yes. put it in there. Oh. And then it, it'll come up with a light box, which can be with mm -hmm. Okay, so 
so here's the last thing that I'm going to say about making sure that you're posting and doing all those things at the right time. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, the, this current school of thought, one of them, on um, how much you should post, now people are down to, like I said, post one time a day at a consistent time. That's it. Okay. Right? I personally have not tested that out. I try to post a couple times a day still, but again, there's 50,000 different opinions and it's really all about what works. I mean, there's basics, um, there's um, best practices, and then there's what works for you and your business, okay? The last thing on um, posting is, I was actually gonna sing Red Hot Chili Peppers, but I, you know, <laughs> I'll give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away now. Anyway, I couldn't find a clip. I really wanted to put it in there. Anyways, it's about giving things away, right? So here's the problem. The internet has gone viral. Everybody's on it. We're constantly bombarded with information 24-7. People want to throw their stuff at you and say, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And we all go, yeah, whatever, right? But the people that are making a difference and getting out there and being seen are people that are creating good stuff and giving it away. You, you would think to yourself, well, I don't want to really give that away because when they come to me so that I can provide that business to them for a price, well, yes and no. You kind of have to give things away to get people to come in. So it's just like advertising like you do locally. You might give away a free consult or you might, you know, if you walk dogs, you might give away a couple things, right? Same thing online. You have to give away stuff in order to get people to be like, hey, I can trust them. Look at what they do, right? Um, you want to help, these are what posts should be on. You either want to help, you want to entertain, you want to be transparent, authentic, and inspirational, which means sharing about who you are and about behind the scenes, like, hey, here's some shots of what we do at work, here's our desks, and everybody's making a silly face, or whatever it is that your culture is about. And that's, those are the four things that people will engage with on Facebook. I'm not going to go into Facebook advertising because I, like I said, could spend a whole two hours on Facebook advertising itself. Um, but I do want to get to the end of what, of my little spiel here. Do, 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 do. So, um, real quickly, one of the things that I am putting together is um, Firefly Business Academy. It's going to be an online digital academy where you can learn all this stuff via electronic videos. Um, so you would have a membership. It's a membership fee. I don't have the price yet. Um, however, there will be varying levels to it, and then there's tutorials in there and community engagement, so you can all talk to each other and say, hey, what do you think of this, what do you think of that, and it'll have, the adver it'll have a video tutorial or course on Facebook advertising that you can watch se seven videos or so, okay? Um, for that, if you guys um, do want to write this down, if you write down this address, you can go there and get on the list, and I'll send you information when that comes out. It's bit.ly forward slash Firefly Business Academy, and it just asks for your name and email address. Um, this one right here, look, go on your phone right now, please. Um, this is an evaluation for me and how I did today, and if you would please fill that out, I would be very, very, very grateful. It'll take you less than two minutes to do it, and I'll leave that up there. And then if you want to connect with me, that is right there. Um, any questions? I know we don't have any more time. That's it. Um, here's what I'd like to do. Okay. Um, we have a drawing, and if we can conclude this this part right now, because you'll stay and answer questions, yes. right? I will. Yep. For those that want to do that, is uh, okay. So this this gives uh, Don a hand, and Don. If, because uh, I understand today, this is the kind of thing you could take a full day seminar on, and and, and probably understand it. Um, probably, probably, probably understand it. I, I, I thought she was wonderful. She was uh, very, very, very on target and such. And what she gave you was a gestalt view, an overall view of what's possible. Don, would you be available for private consultation? Yes. Should they need to do that? I would love to, and I'll just put a plug real quick about that. Um, the first thing that I do is I do a 15-minute call with you to see where you're at, if you're interested. And then the next thing we would do is I do um, a two-hour um, 
strategic planning where we actually sit down and talk about where it is that you are and where you want to go and then I will provide you with a marketing plan at the end of that and I normally charge four ninety five for that but I'm going to do them for you guys for two ninety seven. that's what I have and have a whole campaign going yes okay. yes you'll have your all set for so three months so when I make the initial call and you ask me where are you at and I start to sob I, that will solve that <laughs> We solve okay. it for you. Okay. Well, and then I'll call you up and be like, how come you're not posting Nels? No. Yes. And, and the next thing